Hello and welcome to another video here on the Big Top Farm channel. Today we have something a little bit different. It's not farming related, it's not homestead related, but it is something that I'm doing and passionate about here on the homestead. And that is combining two things I'm actually passionate about and that's 3D printing and video games. And more specifically in this case, Guitar Hero and even more specifically, a clone hero guitar. Now this is um, a design and build by a guy on YouTube called Joshua. So this is the Joshua Les Paul model. Um, I'll put a link to his video in the description as well as, uh, if I can, I'll put the, the little uh, card. Um, but he designed uh, this Les Paul, he has other designs, um, and basically what it is doing is you're creating a chassis that fits either this USB encoder, which again, you can get um, this in the link down in the description. Um, just like everything else, I'm going to try and link as much as I can. Um, you can get these off of Amazon for, I think I got two for 16 or something like that. Um, and these are no latency little um, boards and um, they come with basically everything that you need, wires, all that, and the, even the, the USB cable, but that one's not that long. I got 16 footers, again off of Amazon, link will be in the description. I've used these in the past, I built an arcade um, and I used these and they work great. Um, really simple to, to use and um, yeah, great design. Now, you can also use um, an Arduino and if you use an Arduino, not only can you, you know, control the controller portions of it, but you can add LED lights and all this fancy stuff. I'm not doing that, I just need the guitar to, to work and to play and this was the cheapest, um, best option for me. If you wanna do it the Arduino way, go over to Joshua's video, he talks about it. Um, what this video is more about is going really into depth and hopefully showing exactly how to build it. His video, um, he's, he's younger, so it's a different editing style, a different um, type of, of guide. Um, but if you're not, um, you know, into that type of editing or you need more step-by-step -step guides, that's what this uh, guide will hopefully fill the, the void of. Um, so one other, th uh, another thing that you're going, going to need are these um, flat switches. These ones are red, they're linear. Uh, I got these off of Adafruit. Um, and actually there's the link <laughs> right there to those. These are for the actual frets and these are clicky. And I use this for the strum as well as um, the star power and um, start button. And that's another thing, this will not have the tilt um, to activate star power, or nor will it have the whammy bar. Could you add those things? Certainly. You certainly could add those things. You could add um, a whammy bar that's two buttons on, on here. You could probably add two buttons on here. Um, if you wanted to go in and design one that had more buttons, you could add a whammy bar easily with the Arduino system. You would just need um, the hardware for that and it would it would work uh, just fine. And Clone Hero um, allows you to dial in all that um, in, into the settings very easily. So. Um, no, no problems there. You can add all those features. This is just for playing and you get the star power button, the star button, the bare minimum. That's what this is, this design. I've been playing on one for about two weeks, another one that I built. 
um, and it's been going great. Now, the one thing um, I do need to fix, and that's just because I didn't print these or smooth these out, are the buttons. Um, these ones are better than the other uh, my other guitar, um, but if you can make these out of resin or make this out of ABS and then smooth them with isopropyl alcohol, um, then you're going to have a lot better action. But as it stands now, even with my rough ones, I can basically play exactly how I normally do. Um, just some of the slides uh, stuff is a little bit harder. Sometimes it gets a little caught up, but that's not a big deal to me. But if you really want it to be super duper smooth, I would go resin or ABS on the buttons. So yeah, let's um, let's get started. First of all, we are using a pine sole as our soldering iron. I highly recommend this. Link in the description as well. Um, you can get this off of Amazon. It's thirty-five dollars, or you can get it off of um, the Pine Sixty Four website for twenty-five dollars. Um, but it takes a long time to ship, so I would definitely take um, the the hit and pay more to get um, to get it quicker. Um, I was fine with waiting, but I didn't know it was going to be that long. If I knew how long it was going to be, I would have just gone the Amazon route. And then I just bought a USB-C 65 watt um, power supply. And this this cable is from their website. I don't know if that's on Amazon. If it is, I would get that. It's really nice. It's silicone. Um, it's designed for this. Um, and this will work off of a barrel plug as well. Um, but USB-C is just the way that I went. And this thing, I, like I just turned it on. It's already hot. It's ready to go. I mean, for the price and the quality that you're getting, I don't think you can beat that. Um, unless you're, you know, unless you're spending a whole bunch on like a HACO system or whatever. But stuff like this, I think this is just awesome. So let's get this stuff out of the way. Let's start with wiring these up, um, these switches up. So we're going to start with um, the star power buttons and then the, we'll do the strum. Um, but when you get these, hear that click. Oh, these are so nice. They have these two ends on them right here. It'll focus, focus for me. There we go. Okay. These two metal ends, you're just going to wire them up. Just take the wires that um, come with the USB encoder. They look like this. Now they do come, they come with these metal pieces on the end, um, but just cut these off and uh, that'll focus. Just cut these off and strip them back and you'll be fine. So let's get some solder on these. Now, I, I believe the blue wire for these is the ground wire. Um, if I remember correctly, and you could, um, and we can get into this, you could for the, for these buttons that go into the neck that sit underneath the, the frets, you could just do one big ground into one ground port on here. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to individually ground each one, but, um, that does take up more space. It's just my preference. You don't have to to do that. You can do you can do it however however you want. Now I gotta wait for this thing to heat up. Okay. Oh look at that. It's already heated up. It it fell asleep and now it's already heat heated up. I mean you can't beat that for twenty five bucks. I mean this thing's great. All right, so we'll tend these up. Get get some solder on here. Whoop. 
Okay, well, my uh, phone filled up with storage here. So, as I was saying, we, um, you need to tin up these wires, which I, I went ahead and did. And that basically just means putting some solder on it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put one wire on each of these little uh, nubs here. Now, personally, I have been doing white on top, blue on the side. I don't think it matters. I just think you need one of each on there. And, uh, but I like to try and keep it, um, try and keep it consistent. Some helping hands, um, would help with this, um, project. To hold these buttons while you soldered. But I don't have um don't have any helping hands. So there you go. That's the white one on top if you're orientating it like this. And we'll do the blue wire. And you could go through um, and connect the USB encoder to a PC. And as you solder these and attach um, these to the board, you can, uh, you could test and make sure that they're all working properly. That's what I did my first time. I recommend it. That way you have a peace of mind. There we go. Okay. So, just like that. And you're going to do that on four of these white ones. Just like that. And then in the chassis here, I like to orientate them like this. Just so like, because the, the board sits here. the chassis so then the wires can come out like this it just sits down in there just like that and then you plug that into the respected spot which uh, for that one, that's the start button. It has this nice guide on the bottom here. Um, so AD is up or down. AU is um, up. And then down here, S, ST start. SE select. So it would go right here. This one, which is the third one here, and just 
Looks in there like that. And now you got yourself a start button. So, like I said, you're going to do that four more times on the white clicky switches. Two for the strum, one more for the select. And that'll be the bottom half of the guitar done. Um, then you're going to repeat that same process basically for these red ones. But with these red ones, you're going to need to use Ethernet cable, these stranded pairs. And this is a recommendation from Joshua himself, which um, is a good idea because you got to feed this wire through this neck here. And if you use really thick wire like this, let's say, that's just not going to work very well and, it's, and you're not going to have a good time with that. So you use this. Now, the way that I would do this is I would keep it consistent. And this is where you don't have to run. Um, you could run a chain ground across all of these. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wire them individually um, to ground. And so I would just keep consistent. So I would either, you know, I'd pick solids on top or solids on bottom. But I'm going to do solids on top and then the green white here or orange you know the the mixed color ones here um and then when you get that wired up on this end after you feed it through the neck you're going to take it and again keep it consistent so solid with white and green and white with blue and you could solder these together just like that and then tape them electric tape them I'm not going to do that I'm going to use this these handy dandy things so this is a shrink wrap tube with some solder in the center. And so you would just slide one in through here, just like that. Just make sure that it's past it in that uh, solder joint. And then do the same with the other. And then uh, use a heat gun, um, uh, yeah, a hot air gun, melt that. If you don't have that, you can use a soldering iron, just rub it across really fast. Um, I, would, I wouldn't use the pine sole for that, I would use like a cheap $10 one because it's probably going to ruin the tip. But if you have a heat gun, then just heat shrink that on just like this. And the focus is so bad. Okay. Just on this like that. And then that will make the connection and then put this in its respected spot, which if this is the green button, because it's either green wire, uh, it would go in K1 on the board and we'll go into depth on that. But this is just going over how everything's going to be wired. I don't think you need to be shown every single time how things are going to be wired. I think you can figure that out. I think you just need to be shown you know, once everything is wired, what you do, and that's what we're going to go into to detail about. But yeah, so solder one end of the Ethernet cable to the button, and then run the wire through the neck, which here, so you would set this button 
in there like that. I'm not going to push that down because I don't want it to stay in there. Then run the wire down, 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 and through this portion of the neck. Down the top portion of the guitar and down to here and put it in its proper spot. And then we'll we'll clean up all the wires and, and all that. But that's where you're gonna do on the other end of of that, like I said, do the, the shrink wrap um, tubing, which um, I I highly recommend versus just soldering it. Um, you're gonna get a better connection personally. So I'm gonna do all the soldering, do all that, and then I'll do all the wiring and I'll show you guys that. So I'll be back. Okay, all of the soldering is done and I have the neck all wired up. Um, so you just run the wires through. They all come out here. Just like, just like that. Um, but I wanted to show you how I do um, the shrink wrap part just because this might be something outside of what you normally do and the focus is so bad. Um, so I wanted to make sure that you got to see that whole process and, and, and understood. Okay, so grab my heat gun here. And this is just a Seek One 1800 watt um, heat gun. And you can use whatever heat gun you want. I got this one off of Amazon. Um, I'll put one, uh, probably this exact one, in the links down below. You can go to Harbor Freight and get one. You can use whatever, you know, it, it really doesn't matter um, at all what heat gun you get. It's just as long as it gets, as long as it gets hot enough. So what you'll want to do is take these. Focus. Not. Find this in. Now these are the white ones, and I'll put this kit um, down below as well. The white ones are the smallest ones, but then they have different sized ones um, for different sized projects. Um, the white ones are just the ones that work the best. For for the small, you know, these small wires that we're, that we're using here. So we'll go ahead and do green here since that's the first button. Slide this in. Just like that, okay. And we'll take Okay, we'll turn this on. You can use the low setting. That'll melt everything. Oop. This is really hard to do, by the way, when you're filming.
Check it. Yeah, so that solder in the middle melts, gets around everything, and then the sides hold it in, and that's a strong bond there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to the rest of these, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to wire these into the board and then um, screw everything together. Okay, so now all of the wires are attached in some way. So let's start with the neck here. You don't have to secure it completely. Um, but I would at least get it in the right spot. At least get two screws or one screw in there. That way it's not moving around. We'll do diagonals here. Now on the back of these, once you get them down deep enough, you can put nuts in them in the back. And I'll show you that. You got to feed it through the first layer and then into the second. These are M three by twenties. That's what all of these are going to take. Um, you can get get them anywhere basically. These are from Amazon, of course, just like everything else, pretty much except for the, the switches. Not that you can't get the switches on Amazon. I'm sure they're out there, but I just found a better price on uh, Adafruit or Adafruit or whatever. And I've used them before for other stuff. So thought that would be a trustworthy site and it was they arrived oh okay we're getting there we're getting there there we go yeah and then see on the back you can put nuts in these spots so with that now they're basically where they're going to be with that side. So then we'll come in here and we can place our other switches here. I already put the select and start buttons in. Um, they just go right in here into these two slots. Again, you can refer to the back. 
it says start and select. These ones, these switches for the strum, you're going to put in AU and AD. So that's these ones right here. AU up, AD down. So, and if you get them in the wrong spot, so you put uh, put them in AR or AL, it shouldn't matter because um, you got to map it anyway. Um, but okay, so this one right here in my hand is in um, AU. Now your instincts would be to put it here because that's up, but as you know, it's opposite for Guitar Hero because up actually pushes the, the, the paddle down. Again, it doesn't really matter. Um, oops, I gotta slide it through the other way. It doesn't really matter because you're, you can map it. Um, you gotta map it in Clone Hero anyway. So it's just more of a preference as long as it's in a slot and then you, when you push that button, when you map it, it will do what it's supposed to do. Um, I just like having it where they belong, just because it makes it easier um, in my head. So, okay. So, you got to slide it through before you plug it in, but still... Still a good test. There we go. Okay, so let's slide this through like that, just like that. There we go. And there's a little kind of clicks in um, on the bottom there's a little lip but once you get the um, paddle in there it's not going to go anywhere and you can also um, hot glue it which will probably put some hot glue back here um, just to just to hold it in. I didn't know my other one and it's been fine. It hasn't hasn't moved because once you get this paddle in here like this there's really not that much room for for them to go anyway and you're pushing them into themselves so like if it falls out, you're just going to end up pushing it back, back in where it goes. Now these ones, these ones I would put some hot glue on. Uh, I would definitely recommend that um, just because I've had them fall out on my other one already. So with that, now we can start wiring the buttons. So the two chassis come together, again an M20 right here and a nut. Definitely put a nut on this. Um, and before you secure it you gotta put the the paddle in um, or you're not gonna be able to you know because you're securing this together. <laughs> um, that way. So, with these, it's very simple. 
And again, it really doesn't matter, but this is just how I do it. My green button, so my first button, you're gonna put it in K1. Well, where's K1? K1's up here, right at the front. Right at the front. And then you go K2, K3, K4, and then these ones are also, you know, L1 is K, K5. But, um, yeah, that's just how that goes. And it's super easy. So green, I used green wire. So I know that's going to go in K1. Done. For red, I used orange wire, but a longer orange wire than my actual orange button, which is also orange. And that's going to go into K2. For yellow, I used brown. So that'll go into K3. And then for blue, I used blue, so that'll go into K4. And then orange, orange, it's going to go into, technically it's L1 on the board, but just think of it as yourself as K5. Now, that's all done. That's all good. At this point, I would suggest securing the chassis together. And the reason for that is because now you're going to want to start doing all of the wire uh, cleanup, hot glue, hot gluing all the wires down and all that where they belong. And if your chassis is not secured down, well, that's not going to be a good time. So. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you the, the wire cleanup. Okay, now I've gotten everything screwed together here, got this screwed down, and I went ahead and put the buttons on. Um, like I said, these are smooth enough for me, for, for how I play. I'm not a high-level player. I can deal with this, um, but you can definitely, if you come in here, make this uh, out of ABS or resin, this action will be a lot smoother. But this is a lot smoother than the one that I uh, made earlier, so um, it's still pretty good. Now what I did with this is that this is a um, 0.12 layer height, you know, um, with the smoothing on the top turned on using the CHEP uh, profiles for, for that. Um, just, yeah, I was just trying to make things a little bit smoother, and I did that for this top piece too um, as well. Uh, you're probably noticing this the color scheme. It's just I'm printing using whatever I had. Um, left over. So let's go ahead. I got the hot glue gun here all warmed up. Let's go ahead and we'll um, let's glue down this board. Ooh, getting some hot glue on on some stuff here that I don't necessarily want to. I would push this forward because this it kind of slides. Um, I would I wouldn't push it forward. I was thinking maybe you do want it forward, but then it sticks out. I would just push it all the way back, and then just come in here and uh, we'll just secure this down, just like this. We'll let that dry. That way it just kind of 
stays where it needs to. Um, what's going to be tricky is these. I'm thinking with these, we can just pin these down. Let's pin these down like, like this. All these, ca all these cables keep on getting in the way like other stuff that I'm trying to do. Okay, so we'll just do it like this. And you don't have to do this. Like this is just this is just to I don't know make you feel better and make the the front plank go on easier. Um, but it's certainly. certainly optional I didn't do any cable management in my first one that I did um, I'm doing it in this one just as an example and it will make it a lot easier to um, put the front covers on um, for sure This is what I meant earlier, that these ones don't necessarily like to stay. So with these, I can just glob in the back. I'm doing that because I don't want it to just in case I got too much on there I don't want it to dry in a way that doesn't let it be pushed down it's not like the prettiest glue job in the world. Now this bundle of joy. This is my problem child. Yeah, cool. That was good. Now, these ones. Let's see. Honestly, for me, I'm not too worried about this up here. As long as I put the lid on, it's going to be fine. So I'm going to say that that is enough because I can easily get this on. And that's all, that's all I really care about. So then we put this on here. Cool. Now 
Let's get now these ones. Honestly, for me, I'm not too worried about this up here. Because once I put the lid on, it's going to be fine. So I'm going to say that that is enough because I, I can easily get this on. And that's all that's all that I really care about. So then we put this on here. Put these buttons in. Put this cover on. And secure that down and you'll be good to go. And that's how you assemble it. I'm pretty sure you can figure out how to put these panels on and all by yourself. But overall, pretty simple uh, design, simple build. I just wanted to give a little bit more detail on uh, the assembly. That way um, you had more of a clearer-ish picture in terms of how this uh, actually is put together again go check out joshua's channel link down below uh, be sure to go to bigtopclean.com bigtopclean.com for our products our cleaning products right now we have detergent and um, wool dryer balls stuff like that and be sure to watch our other videos they're now they're more farming and homesteading stuff but still interesting videos um, if you like this video hit that like button hit that subscribe button and i will see you in the next video